Hello everyone, this is Nifty255, and welcome to episode 0 of my modding tutorial series for Kerbal Space Program 1.1. In today's episode, we will explore the basics of how the game operates, and we will go over the skills and software required to create different types of mods for the game. Keep in mind that this tutorial series is not designed to teach programming or 3D modeling, but instead how to apply programming and modeling skills in order to create mods for KSP. Because of this, it is highly recommended that you learn at least the basics of these skills before continuing this series. Now let's get into the required knowledge and software to mod KSP. Just like there are multiple aspects to developing a game, there are also multiple aspects to modding one as well. In fact, they're much the same. Artists are needed for game models, textures, images, and icons. A programmer is needed to write behavior in the game. A sound engineer for sound effects and music and a story writer for scripts and story. Of course, there is no story in KSP, stock or mod, but who said there couldn't be? Many mods require only one aspect. Many require more. If your mod requires an aspect that you can't provide, simply find a partner who can and work with them. Just remember to credit everyone appropriately. Once you've armed yourself with the knowledge you need to create your mod, you'll also need certain programs. For convenience, I will provide links in the description to all of the free programs you will need in each case. If your strength is logic and programming, you may wish to write plugins for KSP in order to modify the game behavior, or maybe add a new type of part to the game. Thus, modders who wish to modify the game behavior using code will need to understand intermediate programming concepts as well as the C-sharp language before attempting to write code for KSP. In addition, it is also recommended to familiarize yourself with programming for Unity, as this is the game engine KSP is built from. Once you've learned the necessary skills, plugin writers will also require software called an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. The most prominent and easy to use in the case of writing plugins for KSP is Microsoft's Visual Studio. I recommend Microsoft Visual Studio Express 2012, though you may use any version of any IDE that supports programming in C Sharp. I have provided a link to the download page for Visual Studio Express 2012 in the description. Follow the link, select your language, download and install. Visual Studio may ask you to register the software. This is free, and if you refuse to register, the software will stop allowing use after 30 days until it is registered. If you're more of an artist and wish to create new parts for KSP, such as engines, fuel tanks, or crew cabins, you will require knowledge of 3D graphics and modeling, as well as a modeling program such as Autodesk 3ds Max or Blender. 3ds Max is a paid software, while Blender is free. Both are extremely powerful, but they both operate very differently from each other. I have provided a link to Blender's download page in the description, but you may also find Blender on Steam. Simply search the Steam store for Blender 3D, or follow the link, download the appropriate version, and install. Of course, creating parts requires more than 3D modeling. Many 3D models require textures, which are images wrapped around the models to provide color to them. Whether or not you are creating the model you wish to texture, it is a good idea to understand the concept of UV unwrapping a model, so you can better understand how your texture will be applied to it. For actually creating the texture, you may use any image editor you like, though Photoshop and GIMP are the most commonly used. Photoshop can come either as an upfront paid software in versions such as CS5 and CS6, or as a monthly subscription for Photoshop CC. GIMP is a free image editor that is just as powerful as Photoshop, so if you don't want to put money down, GIMP is a viable alternative. I have provided a link to GIMP's download page in the description. Simply follow the link, download the appropriate version, and install. Lastly, in all cases except programming, modders will require the Unity Game Engine version 5.2.4. This software has both a free and a paid version, however, modders will never need to purchase the paid version, as the features it unlocks are irrelevant to modding KSP. Along with Unity, you will also need a series of Unity plugins developed by Squad called Part Tools. I've included a download link to Unity, as well as a direct download link from KerbalSpaceProgram.com for the Part Tools package. Simply download and install the appropriate version of Unity, and register an account. You may download the Part Tools packages now or later, as I will explain their installation in later videos. Quick note before we move on. For this tutorial series, I will be using Visual Studio Express 2012 for programming, Blender 3D for modeling, Photoshop CC for image and texture work, and of course, Unity version 5.2.4. Now that we are prepared to mod KSP, let's cover the basics of how the game works. 
First and foremost, KSP is built using the Unity game engine. This means that, while developers are able to use other languages, KSP is purely written in the C-sharp language. It also means that everything in the game is either a game object or a component attached to one. In the context of the game, a game object is any object that exists in the game world. It can be visible or not, it can interact with other objects through physics or exist in the background without direct interaction. A component is any code attached to a game object. This could be a physics collider, a particle system, or a part module. We will talk more about that later. Lastly, each game made in Unity is divided into game scenes. Each scene is basically its own self-contained world. The developer of a Unity game can place game objects with predefined settings and components into a game scene, and these objects will load the instant the scene is loaded. Or, the developer can use code to create game objects dynamically in any scene at any time. When the game is first started, the loading scene is the first to greet the player. This scene is designed to preload all of the plugins, parts, models, textures, and sounds the game can find. It loads, processes, and compiles this data into what are known as prefabs. A prefab is a Unity object that is similar to a sort of master object. It doesn't exist in the game scene, but instead serves as a blueprint for game objects to be created from. Now that the most basic layer of the game is explained, let's get into vessels, parts, and part modules. All craft and KSP are divided into vessels in the game code. Vessels are defined by a code file, also known in C-sharp as a class, called Vessel, which is technically a component, but think of it instead as a container. The Vessel class holds a craft's information such as situation and speed, and a list and structure of the craft's parts. In the flight scene, the Vessel class is attached to the game object the game considers to be the Vessel's root part. The root part is the main part of its craft, to which all other parts are attached. It is typically the first part placed by the player, though they have the option to change which part is the root in the editor. Just like Vessel, there is a Part class which is also a component, but is attached to every game object that is linked, directly or indirectly, with the root part, as well as the root part itself. The Part class holds information such as internal and skin temperatures, colliders, and also contains a list of classes called Part Module. We'll get to Part Modules in a bit. For now, make note that, with the exception of the root part, all parts have one and only one parent part. Here's an example. In this simple rocket, the player would typically place the pod first, making that the root part. Directly attached to that are a fuel tank and a parachute. In this case, the pod is the parent of these two parts. Attached directly to the fuel tank are four fins and an engine. For these parts, the tank is the parent. All of these parts are managed by the vessel component which is attached to the pod. But parts don't do much on their own. Without at least one part module, a part is dead weight, and dead weight is only useful as a simulated payload. Parts need to have a part to play, pun intended. While parts define the information and status of a part, part modules define their behavior. They're what make an engine fire or allow us to run experiments. Part modules can cause parts to do things, and the possibilities are endless when modding is involved. To name a few, these modules range from the standard parachute, activated through staging, to slow a rocket's descent, to the SAS modules, which consume electricity to stabilize rockets in flight. On the note of electricity, there's one more thing about parts I haven't yet covered. Resources. In addition to modules, parts can also contain resources, such as electricity, liquid fuel, oxidizer, ore, and monopropellant. Resources are there for part modules to either create or consume, depending on the purpose of the part. For example, solar panels create electricity, while antennas consume it to transmit science experiments. This concludes today's episode. Special thanks to Necrobones, who has begun helping me compile information to make these tutorials as accurate as possible. And as always, thank you for watching. If you would like to keep track of when episodes are released, simply hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that like or dislike button to tell me what you think. And if you have any questions or feedback, just leave a comment. In the next episode, we begin Volume 1, Custom Parts, where we will cover how to create a part compatible with KSP, export it from Unity, and finally import it into KSP. But until then, this has been Nifty255.